I grab here to control his posture, but he is on his game. So he begins to open that leg up. I can't my body while keeping my legs tight. Uh, head in, I can shoot my other hand in all the way up. If I drop my elbow down, it really clears his chin. Now, without losing it, I come all the way back again, and I draw it in. When we find ourselves in this closed guard, uh, one of the most common things to do in order to break down our opponent's posture and to control our opponent, as we've said many, many times, is we can't just have a lazy guard. Even if my ankles are connected behind them, if my legs are just resting, it's not an active guard. It's a very lazy guard. And it's not going to control my opponent. But one of the principles that, that um, <clears throat> were brought up in this, in this technique discussion was when we grab an inside collar and pull our opponent in to break their posture down and control their sleeve, if my opponent knows what they're doing, they will never allow their head to cross over my belt. Their shoulders and their head will not cross over this imaginary glass wall from my belt up because the leverage is now on my side from that point. The balance is on my side. And that is really what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to break their posture, overwrap their head, protect myself from punches, etc. So if, if I'm winning the close guard game, I've broken their posture down or I've swept them or I've submitted them already. If they're doing their job correctly, what are they trying to do while in my guard? What is the number one thing they're trying to do? Think about it, I'm in inverted mount, right? If we were upside down, I'd be on top of him. So he's in my mount, just inverted. What's his main goal here? Pass the leg. He had to get out of it. To get past my legs and to escape my guard. Because he knows, really, he's in a lot of trouble. Even though he's the one that's positionally upright, and I'm on my back, he's the one who's in trouble right now. Because he's mounted. He's, he's in my guard. So... Like any good player would, if he's gonna play a low guard, and this is what we're gonna, we're gonna demonstrate today, is he is going to put his elbow on the inside, start to frame, and he's gonna begin to put pressure on this leg. And if I don't do anything but stay in this position, the further the space between my knee and my elbow gets, the more structurally weaker I'm going to become. Again, remember we always talked about the spine in line, the structure of the body, and if we move that structure, if we torque that neck, if we move them at a certain angle, we disempower our opponent. And that's an invisible jujitsu we don't pay enough attention to. You will, you stay in it long enough, you'll be like, ah, oh yeah, okay, got it, get it, yeah, okay, that makes sense. But initially, we don't. So a lot of times, we'll hang on here and we'll think, yeah, and so in order to, to sweep them, I'm going to have to move my body out. But then to do that, look what effectively just happened. You know, not only did I let go of my closed guard, but he put a lot of pressure in and popped that open, and now he's going to work the pass. So this, this little uh, fine point here talked about letting go of this collar and switching to this collar. So that instead of his, uh, his body canting over that direction and me having less of a connection between my elbow and my knee, I switch to the other side, which draws him in, but it also draws me, if I can't my body, not lift my body, but can't my body, look at my knee and my elbow get closer again. And his posture is broken by that movement. Just by that movement. Stay with me here. This is going to make sense in a minute. If I get lazy, we've talked about what is open guard and what is closed guard. Remember? 
And just because my ankles broke open, does that mean that he's not in the, he's no longer in my close guard? No. Nope. Long as I'm controlling his hips, he's in my guard. So what am I doing? He can feel it. You can't see it probably, but what am I doing when I can't, and I have to potentially open my ankles. I'm squeezing with my legs. I'm still controlling his hips with my knee, still controlling his posture. But what has happened is in doing this, I've opened his collar, which allows me to freely come up, as we talked about last week, and get a super nice deep bite on his collar with my first insertion of the hand. Palm up, fingers in, thumb out. Look at my, look at my angle. He's, he's kind of already messed up with this, and he's blind to seeing what I'm doing. I shoot my missile in on that angle, and I grab a nice fistful as well. Be careful not to lose this the whole time. Now all I have to do is re-straighten again, and the choke is right there. Remember, the key to the choke finish is not necessarily just me coming back, although that was tight enough as it was. It's also bringing the palms in and digging these thumbs into these carotid valleys. So the very first one right here, I'm gonna do it again. I grab here to control his posture, but he is on his game. So he begins to open that leg up, making sure not to lean over me. He sits back, but he opens this up, and at that time, I grab the other collar, the same side collar, and I cant my body while keeping my legs tight. Uh, so my elbow and my knee connect again. Look at what happens. It curls open his lapel. And now look at, I can shoot this arm in deep. He feels that already. And, I, and it's all this short strength here. But before I draw that in, I can shoot my other hand in all the way up while I'm at this angle from the blind side and try to really ratchet that in, which we talked about last week. So my hands are close. He can feel that's super tight and it's under his chin. If I drop my elbow down, it really clears his chin. And now, without losing it, I come all the way back again and I draw it in to finish it.